नमस्ते फ्रॉम इंडिया आई एम डॉक्टर श्रुति महापात्र आई एम द वाइस चेयर ऑफ कॉमनवेल्थ डिसेबल्ड पीपल्स फोरम आई हेड अ नॉन प्रॉफिट स्वाभिमान इन इंडिया एंड अमोंग अवर मेनी प्रोग्राम्स अ मेजर फोकस इज इंक्लूसिव एजुकेशन आई हैव कॉन्सेप्चुअलाइज some very innovative programs like anjali and saksham which have brought about transformative changes in the education of children in the state of orissa and in india that the principles of diversity equity and inclusion if embedded within the school education system then it lays the foundation for access to schooling for all a larger population joining the workforce and lifelong learning opportunities for everyone disabled or not inclusive education is this new approach that emphasizes all learners must study together under one roof i personally believe i strongly believe inclusive education greatly helps in reducing discrimination against children with disabilities and it promotes equality access and right to education and care today india is a resilient country with a strong policy and legal environment for the protection of the rights of the disabled including that of children with disabilities some of the strong laws which have led the foundation of inclusive education in india and strengthened it further are right to education act 2009 which was amended by the activity of many of us activists in 2012 the right, the rights of persons with disabilities act 2016 and the new education policy 2020 now india had many strong laws and its push for inclusive education it increased a lot with the flagship program of government of india called as sarva shiksha abhiyan and samagra shiksha abhiyan now this program it emphasized the need for providing children the basic support system they required so that they could study in regular schools with all other children so sarva shiksha abhiyan which was later renamed samagra shiksha abhiyan looked at books in alternate format braille books books in large print it looked at therapeutic interventions provision of aids and appliances assistive devices and even corrective surgeries and uniforms but des- despite this push we don't find much change at the ground level and this came to the fore in the year 2019 when n for nos report was brought out by unesco and this report brought to the fore some glaring disparities it found that 50% of children who had multiple disabilities had meant intellectual disabilities they never attended school it also found that in the category of the visual and hearing impaired children 20% of them never attended uh, school equally disheartening was the fact that uh, 75% of children with disabilities in the age group 5 never had been to a school further it found the number of girl child with disabilities is far less than boys with disabilities and as we moved from the primary to the secondary and higher classes the number significantly dropped out all this brought about a lot of thinking and reflection and so the nep the national education policy which came out in the year 2020 had many strong component components in it to ensure that education was accessible that education was inclusive and all children could study together in india i call the national education policy a game changer for many 
reasons. See, the, it recommends inclusion and equal participation across all stages of school education. And it endorses uh, resourcing school complexes, resource centers, engagement of special educators, capacity building of teachers, including uh, education of how to teach children with disability in the teacher training, regular teacher training, syllabus and courses. And also it, it has emphasized on teaching learning materials, books in different format, providing shadow teachers and support teachers. And it has expanded the types of schooling. Children can avail education in neighborhood schools, uh, they may uh, de decide that some classes they want to attend in schools, some they want to take at home. So a lot of freedom, a lot of flexibility has come in the way for ensuring that children do not drop out and children study regularly. Now, if we look at the barriers to the education of children with disabilities, then we find out, I mean, we find that one major reason that I found among teachers was that the attitude towards uh, children with disability is not very uh, positive. You know, they have their own inhibition and they often, when we met them, we interviewed them and we talked to them, we found that the, the easiest thing for them was to say, take these children to special schools where there are other kids like them and it is happening even now. So this is a major barrier. The second barrier is teachers are so overburdened. They have so much of work that they are unable to find time, that extra time that is needed for care of children with disabilities. Then third is lack of accessibility in school. Schools are barrier rated right from entering the school to the entering the classroom. And even if in some schools we find ramps and uh, wide doors and children can go to the school, uh, the toilets are in difficult situation. And even if the toilets are uh, good, sometimes often there is lack of running water. But the most, uh, uh, the discouraging, the demotivating thing that I have found in schools is uh, children remain confined to their classrooms because playground, other activities, auditoriums, libraries, these generally remain out of the reach of children with disabilities. Then we found the lack of ownership of education of children with disabilities by their parents. Parents, um, most I, I'm talking about most of the parents who come from a lower economic background and that's a huge number in India. So they neither have the resources nor the interest uh, to, to spend a lot of resources in uh, taking their children, accompanying them to the school, spending time with them, uh, finding out how they can support the education of the child. So this, this lack of ownership among parents is, is a big barrier. Then of course, uh, other students, classmates, seniors and juniors, lack of sensitization among them with regards to the potential and achievement of children with disabilities. Then of course, the lack of teaching, learning material in alternate format, the lack of books, the lack of alternate examination system, alternate way of evaluation, alternate way of teaching, all these impact children with disabilities. In the year 2012, uh, we did a study and in that study we find, found out that despite and the study was conducted at, in the state of Odisha in uh, India in the eastern state and we focused on government schools where maximum number of uh, children with disabilities go to study because uh, these schools uh, have a lot of facilities where children from uh, parents of lower economic background can go and uh, study comfortably. And moreover, all these government schools provided midday meal. It's a free meal, which is a hot meal, which had attracted uh, parents to the schools. So we identified uh, about 323 children with 
uh, different kinds of disabilities. And we created a concept called as Inclusive Child Resource Center. And the name of the project was Saksham. Saksham means capable, making people capable. So what did we do? We did not invent anything. Whatever were the stipulates of Sabagra Shiksha Abhyan and Sarva Shiksha Abhyan and whatever the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act propounded, we took those and on the basis of this, we created uh, centers, Inclusive Child Resource Center. Each center was managed by a facilitator and this center looked to the needs of 30 to 35 children who came from uh, nearby areas, mostly the urban poor areas or the slums where the poorest of the poor lived. We felt that if the project is successful with the poorest of the poor, then for the rest of the society, it will become a cakewalk. And then this uh, center, it looked at nearby five to six schools and about 30, 20 to 25 um, neighborhood areas and 30 to 35 children, which was managed by one person called as the facilitator, academic facilitator. This person was a link between the school, between the parents and the children. We addressed four groups of people through this center. First was the school, the school governance, Second were the teachers, third were the parents, and fourth, of course, our primary beneficiaries, children themselves. In the school, we focused on infrastructural accessibility. In fact, we invested some funds in the eight schools that we had chosen. So these were eight centers which catered to about 300 children. So in these eight centers, the and these centers were located in schools. They were not outside the premises of the school. So the centers, they provided academic support. They provided extracurricular support. They provided therapeutic support. They provided linkages to availability of various government entitlements. So it was one hub. And here, School After school hours, the children came from their different schools and we looked at, number one, their tutorials, their academic improvement. We developed an IEP, Individualized Education Plan. And on the basis of that plan, we noted down their interests, their hobbies, their health issues, what kind of interventions they needed. and we set the activity to motion. What else we did? We took them on exposure tours to different places, small places. Once every 15 days, we took them on an exposure tour to a park, to the airport, to the railway station, to see and observe. Then we had some hobby classes. We had dance, music, art class. So the children felt motivated to come there. We started parents counseling. So after children, our other focus was parents. We started explaining them, showing them videos, how children with disabilities with a positive environment, with a little bit of support, can achieve extraordinary results. We took sessions. We told them how to get involved in the school. Every school in India has a school development plan and has a school management committee. We motivated them to go and talk to the authorities and become members of a school management committee, give their feedback to the school development plan. Now with the school, our focus was on the leadership group, the heads, the school head and the school management committee members, talking to them, counseling them and showing them easy ways of how children with disabilities can study together with mainstream, uh, in mainstream schools. Then our focus was on teachers. We spent a lot of resources and effort 
because I personally believe that even if the school has many challenges, if the teacher is good, teacher is empathetic, teacher is understanding, then children can achieve extraordinary. So we developed training modules with the government and we told them different techniques how to teach. We went to the schools, we handholded the teachers, we provided them with a lot of resource materials and slowly and gently started introducing alternative method of teaching, alternative um, way of examinations and evaluation. And here we also involved the parents. So the teacher always had a backup support in terms of mothers, grandmothers, grandfathers who gave their time and effort. No, we did not have a lot of resources. So what we did is we motivated community members and grandparents, parents to learn therapies, to learn what was being uh, all the activities that were being done in the resource center so that at home they could provide a, a support to the child. And when the children started performing, see the first thing that happened was dropout disappeared overnight. Yes, I use the term disappeared overnight because children, it was very common for children to have a 20%, 30% attendance. Attendance increased to 80% in schools because they had interesting things to look forward to. They did not have to sit quietly because they knew soonest school was over, they could rush to the Inclusive Child Resource Center. Therapists were there to give them speech therapy, physiotherapy, um, provide them assistive devices, link them to the various government entitlements and get scholarships, get bus passes, get concession fares, and many other such supports. So a vibrancy was created in the school, vibrancy was created in the community, and a vibrancy was created among other children. We spent a lot of time talking to the other children and telling them how they can become buddies, how they can provide support. And this worked wonders, because in many schools we found Amazing friendships being formed. The end result of Saksham was after four years, we found extraordinary achievers. Children with disabilities competing with children without disabilities and coming out with top honors. They were performing very well. Attendance increased. Whereas the general performance was about 40 to 50 percent of marks it increased to 75 percent 80 percent we had toppers in school examination we had children who had dropped out coming back again and wanting to go for various skill development courses we provide started linking them to various vocational trainings and skill development and counseled them how they can go after their schools and get some skills and training the project was so successful and this vibrancy, it the Saksham won two awards, national awards. The CII Conference of the Confederation of Indian Industries Award in 2017 and FIKI, Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, a very strong lobby in India, won it in 2019-20. With there were rigorous scrutinies, a lot of people coming, meeting children, meeting parents, talking to school authorities. And they, with this, we were convinced that, yes, this is a good project. And we went to the government. Government, for almost one year, sent many representatives, many officers, many experts to observe the centers, observe parents' group, observe the children, interact with children, community members, parents, and ultimately satisfied with the results that we were yielding, this project was upscaled by the government of Orissa and launched by the chief minister of the state of Orissa in December 2022. So from eight centers that we were running in the capital city of the state of Orissa, Bhuvaneshwar, it has reached 314 blocks of Odessa. And this 
has convinced now government, civil society, schools, teachers, and parents that inclusive education is not just good for children with disabilities, it is good for everyone, for the schools also to grow in a, as a synergistic whole. Thank you so much.